Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. I'm uh, Uberto, and uh, we will speak about um, functional secret has. Yeah, why you need a double engine. <laughs> and um, so, uh, my I, there is no presentation slide, but basically I work in, uh, uh, in London and finance, and uh, I really love functional programming. And uh, I hope to also transmit some of uh, the love for uh, domain-driven design and uh, well, with then functional programming to you today. And uh, please, uh, if there is any question at the end. Uh, so, how many of you knows about CQRS or event sourcing? Uh, and okay, everybody. So, how many of you have uh, considered to use this in production? Well, well still, uh, how many of you use actually in production? Yes. <laughs> uh, there are quite a high number, to be honest. <laughs> I was expecting less uh, compared to the other conference, but this is a good thing. So. Um, I don't know if you agree, but one of the classical uh, feedback from uh, this kind of architecture that is uh, too complicated. Do you agree? Or? No, okay, perfect. perfect. So yeah, I don't have it to convince you. Uh, so let's um, consider. Um, Secure has, I, I, I will explain later, but for the moment, uh, let's take a very uh, high level uh, idea is uh, stand for command query uh, um, separation, basically. Um, and um, so we, we wanted to separate what is uh, changing the, the command that change uh, the, the state of the system with the query that um, uh, uh, check, the basically read the state of the system. But more generally is uh, part of uh, this uh, idea of uh, there is a, to model our uh, model, to, yeah, to model our domain in a way that uh, goes from a, a command something, the user wants something, and we return a result, which is, for example, different from uh, code or other API that uh, you can expose uh, your model. And uh, some users are really, uh, something that is really good for, yeah, for the example, like uh, we use uh, in finance, for example, in London, to to keep uh, the order of the trades. When uh, the trader do put an order, there is a lot of uh, events that can change the state of the order because there is a modification, uh, there is uh, an option that expires, there is a split of uh, dividends. There is a lot of um, possible events. that, uh, And for this kind of uh, complicated uh, model, a SQL has approach is very good. And. Uh, Instead, it's not very good uh, in other cases. For example, if uh, you only have a report, it doesn't make sense. Or if you have, uh, like, uh, in, we also calculate risk in finance and it's completely stateless, so there is no point of having this kind of, it's just a simple uh, calculation. Or if you have a very high mutable uh, performance, like an exchange, that uh, you really don't have time. But it's, I think, uh, yeah, there is a, still a lot of use cases where it need to make sense. And uh, I want to show two presentations, this um, I call implementation gradient, basically. So you can start with a very simple uh, common pattern, and then you can add an uh, event as a source of uh, uh, truth. Then you can have a CQRS monolith, or you can also split it with CQRS uh, microservice. And uh, um, you really don't have to do the decision at the front end. You can start with uh, something simple, like a common path, and then start adding complexity when uh, your system really needs. Of course, if you already know that it needs, you have to go to the way down, okay, you can go. But uh, at least uh, to understand the first, uh, it's better to see as a kind of gradient, and uh, you can stop at the point where you are more comfortable and uh, make more sense for your situation. And so let's uh, briefly see all this uh, kind of so the command pattern is uh, one of the famous pattern of the design pattern, uh, Gang of Four book. And um, basically it uh, allows to recreate state. So you query your model using command. And uh, yeah, this is the, the, the book implementation, like uh, you have a command that implements an interface client. Uh, 
And it's quite good because it separates what is the logic of your system from the infrastructure of the system, and you have an API that is consistent. But um, it still doesn't solve all the problem. It's still a good. Uh, the next step, let's say, is the event source. And uh, the idea of uh, event source, uh, uh, let's see if it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, the idea of uh, event source uh, is that uh, these are not events, these are commands. Okay, this, but uh, there is a user that sent commands, and then the commands have got transformed in event. Then you have uh, the event log, and then uh, the events have got processed, and then you have the state. And uh, this gives you basically uh, an automatic persistence. We, we will see later what is the difference between uh, command and events. But the idea is that uh, in this way, you basically separate what is uh, the commands or what is the user want from uh, what is exactly happened to the system. So it's uh, easier to have a uh, persistence in this way because you just have uh, to repeat uh, the, the events. But still, uh, you have a kind of a limit of scalability because for each time you have to re uh, review all the events. And so the idea of uh, secure hash basically is, uh, okay, maybe in your system you have uh, uh, more read queries than uh, write, which is quite common for a, l a lot of uh, kind of systems. So in that case, it doesn't make sense to have all the complication of the model and the comments which is, yeah, this part, yeah, this part. And uh, it doesn't need to have all this stuff for the, for the read part. So the idea is that uh, we do the write, which is the stuff that uh, is really complicated from a point of view. We publish uh, the events, and then from the event, we, we create basically a snapshot of the data, which is the uh, read data. And then you can query the data. So for example, the most typical implementation is you get an event, you publish the event uh, as uh, uh, basically an SQL database, which is not your, it's your kind of a snapshot, but it's not your truth, because your truth is uh, the uh, list of events. And uh, so you can delete the MySQL, your data, SQL database anytime, and uh, you just uh, can recreate. But uh, when you wanted to query, you just have to use uh, SQL. So you can use any report, any SQL query that you know. And uh, you also have uh, the um, tranquility that you know that uh, doesn't matter how uh, high is the load on the uh, SQL side, uh, you want to uh, affect uh, the variety side. Of course, there is a kind of problem that uh, you, you, have, you can have a kind of delay. So you, you, can, you have an eventual consistency, but it could be some microseconds uh, or so. sh should be fraction of seconds, should be some second in a very distributed system of delay. And uh, you can still go up, I mean, to make more complicated things and uh, split the stuff in a microservice. So you will have a one server with a write, one server with the event store, uh, the event exchange. Uh, this is uh, from uh, Axon uh, uh, documentation. But you, you can uh, define as you want, but you can split uh, this stuff in uh, many uh, service. And uh, typically, on the query side, uh, you have a mm, multiple instance because uh, you, you don't need. Instead, that the uh, write side must be unique, at least. Uh, or you can shard uh, your data, or it must be unique anyway for a single shard. And um, one, uh, one other consideration is that uh, this is the usual uh, separation between a view and a common, but you can also imagine other. For example, in um, finance, we need to query data at some point in time. So someone uh, can say, why this uh, stock had this price at uh, 3 p.m. Uh, three days ago? And uh, you have to justify why you calculated that price. So you have to recreate uh, your whole uh, uh, system, your whole data at that time, at that point in time. And uh, you can do that also with the CQRS. Uh, and basically, you replay the events uh, up to some point of time. And then you have a snapshot of that point of time. And uh, you can create, uh, for example, a snapshot every night or stuff like that for kind of uh, fixing. And, uh, 
so in this case, uh, the, the read part, the query part is very different from just a normal SQL database. So you can also have uh, this freedom to explore other uh, double, uh, kind of a double timestamp architecture. This will be interesting, but another, another talk. So let's introduce another concept, uh, the concept of a uh, domain-driven design, which is uh, let's talk with the experts. You can read uh, the comic. <laughs> And uh, so the main idea of a domain-driven design is that uh, your code should kind of resemble the discussion that you have uh, with the expert. So if uh, an expert see your code, of course, it will be not able to write a code or to debug a code, but it should kind of see his logic translated in code. So the kind of name should be similar, and uh, the kind of uh, uh, you shouldn't I mean, in your logic, you shouldn't have any infrastructure stuff that can be uh, very hard to read. And uh, so the idea of uh, DDD is that to have uh, this conversation with the expert domain and uh, keep uh, the, your code and the domain uh, knowledge kind of aligned, which is something that we'll try. And then uh, there is a functional programming that in this talk came together. <laughs> There will be tomorrow a very good talk on functional programming on uh, Kotlin by Raoul. Uh, and uh, uh, this is not uh, the best place to talk about functional programming. But uh, the main idea of a functional programming that you probably also heard uh, here this morning is that uh, everything must be immutable. Your function must be pure, so only input uh, given output. Uh, you can use uh, higher um, order functions, so functions that take other functions as input and produce new functions as output. There will be no exception because uh, you will not have a side effect, so all the flow must be uh, translated in types. And uh, the whole point at the end is that you have only transformation, and uh, each transformation should preserve some property of the system. So you, you start thinking that your type system in a way of uh, transforming the type from one type to another type. And uh, OK, my, I, there is no silver bullet in uh, our field, but uh, this is a really, really uh, good match. Yeah, and uh, we have a the meme moment. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see our protagonist. Uh, the first thing is that um, because uh, we said uh, we are domain-driven design, so we wanted to represent the domain, and the domain is something that change, but we also functional programming, so we have only immutable stuff. So how can we represent a state change in functional programming? There's something called uh, uh, algebraic data type that basically solves this problem. So it's uh, when uh, a type uh, is composed by other different types. So in this case, for example, this, I just chose this because it's the most simple one. Uh, we have a, um, the result of an operation can be something that is validated. It can be either valid or not valid. And of course, if it's valid, uh, we have an error associated. If it's not if it's invalid, we have an error associated. If it's valid, we have a, a value, the, the actual value of the calculation. And so there is no way to have a, in traditional way, you should have a two fields, but then the two fields have nothing to do with each other, so you cannot have a, and there could be a, a found, I mean, a source of problem. But uh, using uh, ADT, basically, we split uh, this uh, two concerning two different classes, and uh, there is no, um, I mean, in the valid class, there is no reference to the error and vice versa. And um, the other concept that uh, we will introduce is the concept from functional programming, is the concept of fold. Fold, which is also called uh, reduce in some case. The fold basically is the idea that uh, you start with. Um, uh, you start with uh, some. Um, some t, a, a collection of t, whatever t is, like a string, and you finish with a, a, an r, which is something else, like, could be something else, like an integer. And then you have an operation that, you have a, an initial state and then an operation that take uh, an r to a t and then return a new r. 
So in, internally, it's like a recursion, but in a kind of a structured way. So you don't have to figure out your own recursion because you can directly use a um, default def function, which is a normal function from uh, I/O the function in the, the Kotlin library. And then, okay, then we have uh, the commands. So the difference between uh, commands and events is that uh, a command is something that uh, the user asks, uh, but it's not given that uh, it will work. So the user can ask, uh, please uh, uh, print uh, this uh, report, uh, but uh, if the report is not ready, we, we have an error. Is that the events is something that happened to the system, and uh, which is something that, uh, apart from bugs or uh, actual problems in the system, it should always work. Because it's something that happened. It's not something that uh, you ask for. So um, each commander, the idea is that each commander basically will take a kind of a transaction of some uh, data and then transform in something else. And then, uh, yeah, we have the events, and the events represent the state. So anything that changes in our data, in our state, will be an event, will be represented by an event. And uh, so you can see this uh, state plus event equal new state, which is very similar. It's exactly the same that we just saw with the fold. So you have an initial state uh, plus an event, and then you have a final state. It works exactly in the same thing. And this is how functional programming and uh, event sourcing come together. Then, uh, uh, Okay, now this is a bit. Uh, so we have values and entities. So the idea is that uh, to differentiate between stuff that uh, is just a value, like uh, a date, uh, an address, uh, which is, uh, if you have an address, it's just an address. And uh, entities, which is something that in the real world has uh, its own identity. Like if you have uh, two people called uh, John Smith, they are still two separate people, even if they have the same name. But if you have uh, two address, uh, uh, place, whatever, one, two, three, they are actually the same address because uh, the address is the same. The difference is that in a functional programming, anything is immutable anyway. So even if they have a different identity, they, they are still immutable. And then in uh, the DDD, the, 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 um, uh, let's say, lingo, uh, we have these things called aggregates, which basically is just uh, an object uh, that keeps together all the stuff that change in transaction. So if you have, uh, for example, an order, an order can have uh, an address, a uh, user, a lot of uh, things attached. But uh, they, they change together, and uh, they must be, so they form one aggregate, one transaction, basically. And uh, this is important because uh, when we do the event sourcing, we will use uh, the aggregate as a kind of uh, uh, each event work on a, a single aggregate. So we cannot have an event working on the whole system because that will prevent basically scaling. Yeah, sorry, there was, and uh, basically the idea is that the aggregate is what the events fold to. So when you have an event that fold, you have an aggregate at the end. I hope uh, you are still with me. <laughs> Let me know if uh, there is something not clear. But I, I hope uh, to do some live coding later, so uh, I hope to explain that. Okay, so this was uh, all the writing part, and then uh, there is the query part. Okay, so when I ask uh, for a query, I go to the snapshot, uh, and uh, I can ask uh, on, on the snapshot of the data. And one of the advantage of uh, have a separate model, basically, for query and uh, comments, is that uh, in the query can have a completely different model because it uh, will be a model created uh, within the events and can be completely normalized, it can have uh, a different kind of uh, um, separation because uh, we are not worried about uh, um, creating stuff, or modifying stuff, we are just worried about uh, showing a representation. And uh, so we, we can do the, any representation that makes sense for the query. And uh, finally, to, to put all this stuff together, especially with Kotlin, we have uh, this idea of actors. So since uh, the events are a stream, basically, 
and then you could have uh, these uh, coroutines and channels that work very, very well. We, instead of uh, uh, having different threads that uh, are aligned with the locks, basically we just have uh, an actor that is kind of an object that lives in its own thread and just uh, communicate with the, the other object, uh, the other actors using channels. And uh, the, um, in this case, for example, we can have an actor working as a command model, an actor working as a query model, an actor working as an event source. And if you want actors, it's a bit like having microservices inside the same application. And then you can also easily, once you have everything in actors, you can also split the actors and move the actor to external service. And then, uh, yeah, the event store, which is uh, quite simple. I mean, you can choose any implementation that you want. The only important thing is that uh, for each event, you have to remember the timestamp, so when the event happened, uh, the type, uh, it's not clear, but is the type of uh, the aggregate, so which, where it uh, basically changed, what is going to change, the ID of the uh, object that is going to change, of the aggregate, so it's more complicated, it can be. The actual event, so what has happened. And then the version, because of course, if you wanted to add a new version of uh, new events and stuff like that, you probably need uh, to keep uh, memory of the version. Because at the end, uh, your list of events is really your uh, source of thought of the system. So, but it's still a quite small uh, table if you wanted to see in a kind of a database way. And um, you just need uh, any kind of database that allows to index, to uh, query by index quickly. And then you can uh, query by, uh, you wanted to ask something like, for example, uh, which is the object with more modification or uh, how are the average modification for each object or which is the, the object that has never been modified. And in this way, you can, uh, you can also collect the kind of uh, in, in, um, auditing information that can be quite useful. But for um, not so big model, I mean, we have a machine with uh, 10 gigabytes of RAM, so uh, a RAM implementation can be completely fine. Everything is in memory. The, the events, of course, are saved, but then uh, the events all can be uh, completely in memory. I mean, the, the persistence is on the, on the disk, but then you, you, ca you can keep everything in memory to, for uh, fast query. If it's more than your uh, size of memory, of course, it must be on some kind of database. But I saw that people uh, tend to focus too much about uh, the event source, uh, event store implementation. The reality is that anything works so far, and then if you have a problem, you can probably migrate to something better. And, uh, okay, let's see some uh, here code. So, of course, the, my experience was in finance, and uh, I noticed that uh, actually uh, allocating a, a structured uh, product is quite similar to uh, a pizzeria order system. <laughs> so, I did uh, this, uh, it's on GitHub, if you want uh, to see the code, is everything is in Kotlin. And uh, the idea is that uh, you have a kind of chatbot, or if you want something like uh, uh, simulating uh, a phone call uh, to a pizza here, to a pizza place, uh, to ask for some pizza. And uh, we wanted to keep track of uh, what's happened to our orders. And uh, so, yeah. So this is the idea. So I, you can start basically just, um, this is basically what I was talking about. So this is your, the blue things are kind of a state and the, the yellow things are the events that happen. I'm sorry for my writing, but uh, you can probably, oh, you can also see here basically. So this is the code and this is the paper. <laughs> and uh, so you, you have a tree like this. You figure out uh, which is uh, the possible state of your system. And then uh, you, you translate events in, uh, so something that goes, all the arrows are events, 
and all the state, the blue ones, are um, sealed class that we saw before. And then uh, you can just uh, write the code, and uh, we'll see how. And uh, the, this, the next thing is that basically you have uh, the world system here, and uh, it's quite easy to understand how things should uh, happen, uh, uh, comparing to kind of a normal diagram, a UML with a lot of arrows and stuff like that. So basically everything that is not here is absolutely uh, impossible. And uh, let's see how this translating comments. And uh, so basically for, for your comments, the, which is probably the first thing that you wanted to implement because you, when you start a real project, first, the, first, the, the easiest thing is that uh, what the user want. So what can user can do? They can start an order, they can add uh, an item, they can add the pizza or a Coke, they need uh, the address, uh, they wanted to confirm the order, so you can basically clo close the close, then someone will deliver the pizza and then you get the payment, or for some reason the pizza got refused and then you refuse the payment. And you can define uh, the item that you wanted to put in the menu, so the kind of pizza and uh, Coke and etc. And then, you have same thing, so you have a event. So we have, in this case, two aggregates, which is the order and uh, the item. And so we have some events for creating the items and some events to create the order. And, uh, yeah, and then, and then on the other side, after the comments, there are the queries. Okay, so which kind of a query do we want to do to our system? Of course, we can uh, get uh, the order, but we can also probably ask uh, how m all the open orders, all the orders that are not uh, closed in this moment, and then probably, I don't know, some manager wanted to see the number if uh, they go up and down. Or you, we, we can ask uh, which is the biggest order, which probably means the order with the uh, uh, most expensive. And then uh, we can do all the kind of uh, statistical stuff that if we wanted to have a kind of uh, uh, live uh, dashboard uh, on, on data. And, uh, and then uh, the implementation on the query side, basically is the, the query, the, they cannot emit the event because the commands emit the event, so the query just read the event. And uh, for each event, basically, they have uh, to process uh, the event and uh, keep uh, their uh, read-only status updated. And then, uh, yeah, this is how, basically, if you want uh, to create an order, so if someone asks you the order one, two, three, give me what is now, you just get all the events from the order one, two, three, and you fold them, starting from the empty order, which is a kind of a starting point, and then you have the final order, the current uh, state of the order. So all your entities are this kind of event composable, and then basically they must uh, implement uh, this uh, compose. And this compose uh, function take basically a, an event and then a return, uh, where is uh, the definition? Yeah, and then a return uh, the new event composable, the new entity. And uh, note that uh, basically on uh, the event type, uh, there is no way to say it's not possible. So either you return uh, the new status, like in this case. So if you have an empty order, someone do a starter, it will start uh, the, um, create uh, basically an, um, a new order. But uh, if you do another, like pay, you wanted to pay an empty order, which is something that is not uh, allowed, then uh, you basically have uh, returned this. So basically, you, because you cannot, it's something, uh, uh, and of course you can put some lo uh, logs or warnings because this is something that should never happen. But when uh, we have uh, the commands, yes, we, we can return the commands if it's not working. And uh, yes, this is uh, the case basically when uh, this is uh, the command type. So we have uh, this polymorphic process that uh, take a command and return uh, a function the function of this uh, type alias, which take an uh, event store with an extension, but okay, take uh, the event store because of course we need the event store, and then return a, a result. 
And uh, the result is something that we saw before, a validated error and event. So you can have uh, actually errors that are uh, separated types. So each, you have a separate type for each event. And, um, and at the end, uh, you have, uh, yeah. You basically, according, uh, you have this, just this big one, and uh, according to the kind of a command, you execute the command. And of course, each is executed is a different code, is a different function. And uh, it will be sorted out by the one, uh, the cutting one. So inside the executor, there is the actual logic where you call the logic. Now, for this example, basically, there is almost no logic. The only thing that uh, can happen is that uh, if, if you wanted to do something that doesn't exist. But uh, so for each one, basically, you, if you wanted to create a cre create item, basically, you pass the ID, and then you create the item. But if the item already exists, then you return a, a, an error. And you can be very specific. Because we don't have exceptions, so everything must be uh, in the return type. And then this is uh, the actor. So basically, the actor just to read the uh, commands from uh, a channel. And this is uh, the final application. So the application is just uh, an event store, command handler, and the query handler. And they uh, have uh, some uh, methods like uh, start, stop, uh, and then process. And in this case, uh, AO implemented both process command in sync and uh, async which in this specific case probably in, in sync makes sense, but you can have other use cases where you really don't care the order where you execute the commands so far as uh, you execute all, all of them. And uh, yeah, and then uh, you have a basically, uh, you can create a test that works as um, a, a certain test where you, the blue part uh, is uh, the writing, and then uh, the yellow part is uh, the query. So the command and the, the, the query. And uh, you have to wait a, a, some milliseconds just to make sure that uh, they are aligned. In this case, we, it's a test, so we, we simulate just a wait. Or we can also do something more sophisticated, but just for a test sake, uh, it's okay. And so this is basically how your code looks like. Well, not, it's not a code, this is a simulation, basically. But uh, it's something that uh, you can uh, write yourself. I mean, let's say that uh, someone came and said, we have a problem if someone order mozzarella, we, we cannot process the order. So you can easily write something like that, run and see what, what is the uh, result of the system. And it's quite easy, so also someone else can uh, come and help. And now let's do an exercise. And um, so this is the, the current state, but uh, the manager came and said, we have a lot of problem with uh, delivery, and we wanted to track exactly who is delivering what, in which time, and when uh, we have a delay. Okay, so we need uh, to a new state, uh, dispatch, dispatch, that uh, represent when the pizza left the store. So it's something between uh, Confirm order, which is something, confirm is still on the phone when they say, are you okay? She said, yes, this is confirm order. And uh, they paid, and uh, before pay or refused. So we needed to create a, a new entity. So let's switch to real code. If there is any question, by the way. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I will start looking at, you know, uh, I, um, I will start looking at the test. So we have uh, this test, uh, uh, deliver to margaritas. And I see that, uh, Okay, I create a start uh, at the item address, so I cannot confirm the order in, until I have bought the item and the address. But before the pay, I put this dispatch. And the dispatch want the PN, which is the phone number, which is uh, the our ID, internal ID. I mean, it's just a test, don't. Uh, 
Um, it would want to work if someone call again, so, but for a small kid say, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. And then uh, they, they said, uh, okay, we also wanted to keep uh, the, the name of the, um, uh, of the person, the, the actual uh, that went uh, with the scooter and did uh, the delivery. So they delivered him a name, and they said that this uh, Joe did the, the, the delivery. Okay, and of course, uh, IntelliJ told me, yeah, I don't know what is this uh, dispatch. And uh, we can go here and say, okay, let's define dispatch. It will be a data class. Dispatch, we have a phone number. IntelliJ is really smart, and then uh, they have a delivery man. Of course, uh, this is a string, but in a real case, it will probably be some more uh, structured, but for the moment, it's okay. And when I said, okay, we did this, uh, so we can uh, just uh, rerun the test. Now, as you can imagine, it won't work. And then, of course, because the, we have a, a when. Okay, we, we needed to do the execute for the, uh, this command, and we haven't defined. But this is uh, the next thing that uh, the IDE will tell us what we have to do. So let's uh, say, okay, in case this is a dispatch, then we just needed to execute the dispatch. Uh, probably execute is not the best uh, possible name, but uh, it's still enough. And uh, of course they say, I don't know what is this. So we can say, okay, let's create the execute for this page. And uh, um, yeah, we can put it together with the other execute, basically. And uh, yeah, let's uh, copy paste because uh, we are programmers, so we can copy paste. <laughs> And uh, okay, so we, we need to, to get the current uh, uh, order at the moment. Uh, yeah, this is actually, this is, uh, I'm returning a lambda, so this must be equal. And um, so I, I get the order, and then uh, I see, we are doing a uh, um, dispatch, so the only uh, thing that uh, we care is that uh, if it's a confirm order, And then uh, if it's a confirm order, basically, we, we don't have to do any logic. We just say, okay, this is fine. We just return. Uh, and we have to return a valid, whatever, a valid confirm, uh, dispatch order. No, dispatch. And uh, we need the dispatch with the phone number and uh, the delivery man. Uh, otherwise, it's not okay. But, and, uh, we can do something more sophisticated, but for the moment we can just say that uh, invalid order. Oh. There is a T somewhere. But <laughs> yeah, let me finish. So, but uh, we have IntelliJ, so yeah. No, where, where is the T? <laughs> yeah, so also this one. Uh, um, um, yeah, and that's it, basically. But of course, now we have uh, also with this T, yeah. And then, uh, okay, they say, we, we need uh, the, um, the, the events. So let's go to the events, and then, okay, we need also this one. So that. And then, uh, in this case, uh, um, uh, commands and uh, events are very similar. When uh, um, when things became more realistic, uh, 
commands and events tends to, to get uh, different. Because uh, one is very simple, where you have a command, uh, add an item, and then you have the events item added, and that's it. But uh, in a real case, for example, you add an item by ID, you have a lot of things that must happen uh, during the, um, uh, the command, because the command is something that uh, is a user, front user uh, UI. Instead, the events is something that have to work with the system. So it must be much more precise. And uh, now this is compiling. So let's see what the test say. And the test say, yeah, we forgot about the query model. OK, the right model is OK now. But now the query model say, I really have no idea what to do with the, this uh, dispatch event. And uh, basically, because we are programmer, we can copy paste again. And we say, okay, now we are in the query mode. Uh, you can see that is okay because we are in the. But this is the query model, trust me. And uh, we we get the order, and then we say that the new status is dispatch. And then uh, this is the query model status, and that we haven't defined yet. And. Also, yeah, this is uh, the possible order status, and basically we just have to add the dispatch. And this is also something that um, uh, happened, and uh, basically you can, in this case, uh, the query model is very similar to the white model because it's, it's a joke, it's just an example. But uh, in real case, uh, you will see that uh, they, they tend to separate, it became uh, different when uh, things became more complicated. You can have, a, for example, more detailed query, uh, query state because uh, with the same event can say, I don't know, for example, in this case, you can imagine to have something like dispatched by uh, scooter or dispatched by uh, uh, bicycle because when you do the actual dispatch, you can check, okay, this man is using this and this. And that depends on what you really want on the query side. So. It, there is a kind of a duplication, but it's not real duplication. It's not duplication of intent. It's just uh, that uh, could, uh, it's just a coincidence that uh, they are uh, very similar. But with the complex system, they tend to separate. And, and then, uh, yeah, I think I will add this. Uh, I, I didn't. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. Uh, okay. No, this is uh, confirmed again. Ah, I did on the other one. No? Yeah, wow, that's so really smart. Um, okay, let's do the. Where is this? Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm not so good at the live coding. <laughs> so don't interrupt me when I'm coding. <laughs> Okay, and then now what do we have? Uh, and then uh, we have, uh, yeah, some other tests now are working. And um, of course, uh, now, uh, of course, uh, you have uh, some, uh, some other stuff to do to fix, and uh, you can fix yourself. Basically, it's quite uh, straightforward. And um, yeah, more or less now, I, I really like to have uh, some, if you have uh, some question. But from here, you just have uh, to check all the other tests and uh, see which scenario do you want, or which scenario you don't want, uh, and then uh, fix them. Uh, why, why don't you use the real polymorphism uh, with uh, commands, at least, to reduce the amount of when and code duplication? Well, my, my point is that I don't want to reduce the point of when. I really wanted to be sure that every time uh, 
when I will be it uh, what when I in add something new, I wanted to be sure that uh, I needed to fix the all the when. I can use polymorphism in that case. Basically, I have it to know when to change the when or, or not. But uh, well, this is the functional way, of course. And uh, for me, this uh, gives me much more. Uh, it's fast, and uh, the code uh, must be clear. It's clear for me. I don't have to think about it. Everything is there. But I, I understand that is uh, the traditional way. I mean, the object-oriented way. Yes, we we'll use a polymorphism. Object of polymorphism. But in, uh, there was a slide that I removed because, uh, but uh, in a kind of sense, uh, object orientation is like uh, doing gardening. You grow up and everything change. Instead, the functional program is doing like uh, mounting uh, a clock where each gear has to fit exactly in that point, and you have absolutely no slack. Uh, it's a different uh, philosophy. Um, yeah. Other question? Yeah, are you happy or? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't have to agree, but just uh, to clear. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs>